When people come into my workshop recently and they see my new laser sitting on the workbench, the inevitable first question they have is, so, what can you actually do with it? And apparently everything isn't the answer they want to hear. So I simply tell them there are three basic things you can do with a laser. If you're new to lasers and you want to find out what these three things are, then keep watching. Hi, I'm Steve and I make everything. In this video, I wanted to take the opportunity to quickly walk you through the three basic concepts for laser printers. Now we're specifically talking about CO2 lasers that are mostly for low-end commercial or home use. So this would be uh, certainly like my Muse 3D, but also uh, lasers like the Glowforge or even a K40 if it's a little more uh, industrial. So anything said here will apply to any CO2 laser. And with that, Let's start walking through the three basic concepts. So the first technique you're going to learn when you get a laser is cutting, and you're going to use this all the time, so get used to it. Now the good news is, it's actually really simple to do. You generally find the right settings for the material you're trying to work with, and set the speed correctly, and you'll have successful cuts every time. Now, there are a couple of materials that are really easy to cut. For example, wood or paper, cardboard, even acrylic. Those will cut really easily and settings for those are pretty broad. Uh, there's a lot of flexibility for error if you have any. However, there are materials you can't cut. Any kind of metal, for example, be it aluminum or steel or copper, anything, you, you will not be able to cut those. Uh, similarly, things like stone, you won't be able to cut a stone in half. If that's what you wanna do, then go find a chisel because your CO2 laser is just not going to do it. Now. There's not a whole lot more you can say about cutting. It is a pretty simple technique, and I can show you an example of how to, how to do that uh, with Retina 3. Uh, but it, this will also be a technique that you can use with virtually any other laser software. So there's nothing specific about the uh, full spectrum Muse 3D or, or any other laser that will prevent you or, or enable you to do this. And that's really all there is to say about cutting. Uh, like I said, you'll use it all the time. So, you know, start playing with it, get used to it. The second technique you need to learn is etching. And etching is a little more complicated than cutting, but fundamentally what it is is a cut that doesn't go all the way through the material. This is useful for things like uh, lines, like if you're laying down a grid, uh, for example, if you're building a tic-tac-toe game and uh, board game and you want to create the the tic-tac-toe board. You would use an etched line to, or etched set of lines to create that board. But you can also use this technique for creating uh, depth in objects. If you're building a logo, for example, you might want the letters to be raised uh, with the material around it being dropped down, or uh, or you want the letters etched in into the material so that they have a three-dimensional effect. But other than that, there's, uh, there's not a lot of specific difference. Different power settings, again, you'll have to play with settings uh, depending on your material. But, but fundamentally, if you understand cutting, in etching is really just cutting but not going all the way through the material. The third and final technique you need to learn with your laser is engraving. Now, it's not used nearly as often as uh, either cutting or etching, but Engraving has some, some great appeal if you're trying to do something uh, that has uh, contours in it, for example. So think about engraving like carving. If you were taking a knife and carving into a piece of material, the result wouldn't either be untouched material at the natural surface of the material or a flat surface two millimeters down. It would be a, a contoured edge rounded over in some way. So that's really what, what engraving is. This is typically used for things like photos. Now, almost always you're going to do a photo in black and white, uh, like a monochrome photo, uh, sorry, not monochrome, a grayscale photo. So think about grayscales when you're, when you're uh, doing engraving. Now, the good news is virtually every laser cutter engraver can support this. Uh, and so once you kind of get onto it, you're going to use it a lot because it produces some great results. But the thing you need to understand is it's not an exact science. There are things you need to play with. So 
you know, going from a power setting of 55 to 50, uh, while and and reprint and recutting the same image into a piece of wood, for example, can generate radically different results. So you do need to kind of play with things. And again, once you once you determine what the best settings are for the material that you're trying to do, write it down so you can recall it later, store it somewhere, create a profile in your in your laser software. And because you're going to want to do this again, for sure. Engraving is the hardest thing you would ever have to do with a laser, but it is it produces the most satisfying uh, results. Uh, it's not, uh, you know, simply a cut where you punch something out or uh, a, a binary kind of setting where something's on or off. This creates some some nice, smooth, three-dimensional imaging. And... Uh, and once you see it, you're going to want to do it all the time. So now that we know the purpose behind cutting, etching, and engraving on our laser, it's probably a good time to create an easy sample that allows us to demonstrate these concepts. So what I did was in Inkscape, I created three very simple objects. They're really just squares, and we can lay them out on Retina and Grade 3 and get them cut. Again, this will work on any other laser as well. Uh, virtually all of them support engraving. So feel free to give it a try. Here we are in Retina Engrave 3, and you can see I've already got a piece of material. This is eighth inch, just a scrap of eighth inch birch plywood that I had uh, lying around. And I've previously scanned the workspace, so I know where the part is. Now what I did was create three separate images. The first one will be just a simple they're all they're all just basically squares but the first one is is one we're going to use for a cut and you can see it's empty in the center and i've chosen that red outline which is my typical uh, detail for cuts now we're not actually going to do a raster on this one we're only going to do the vector piece and i've have some previous settings here so 40 percent power should be easily enough to cut through this eighth inch plywood uh, so that's the first piece the second the second part we're going to work on is the the etching and for this one we're going to we'll, we'll drag it over here onto the board and for this one we're not it, it as well isn't a raster, so we'll, we'll turn off the raster and we're only going to use the vector piece. Now what I will do, you'll notice this one is actually black because we're, we're not, it's not a cut, so we're not going to use that full power. But what I'll, what I'll do is I'll select just the, the innermost uh, square here, just so you can see what it looks like when you actually do an etch. And uh, we'll go to We'll make it a light etching and we'll go to 25%. So all of them will be 25%. It's just that in the center, it'll look like a fill, uh, like an engrave, but it's not actually an engrave. Uh, you can see we selected the, uh, the infill here and we selected the one that's made up of horizontal lines. So it's actually etching lots of lines close together to simulate uh, an etching there. And the final image we'll bring in will be our actual engrave. And this one, what you'll notice when I bring it in is initially it's gonna look a little funny, but what we'll do is we'll turn off the, the vector because this one is actually only a raster. Now there's a couple of things we can do here. The, we don't, obviously want it to print like that. We want a graduation. So what we could do is we could play around with things like the power and try and get it right. Uh, but what I'll do instead is, is I'll go to a halftone dither. And for power, we'll use, well, quite a bit. We'll, we'll be up in the, in the let's say, 90% range. Uh, and for speed, we'll drop that down a little just so that the laser has time to do some work. Now, there's also uh, three settings down here. Blur and edge control how much detail you can see on things that are uh, in, in this. This is really an image, so it's not, it's not like a line. So 
what we'll get is the ability to manipulate in, in this in some of the ways you would typically uh, play with a photo, for example, where you can sharpen the edges or uh, you can blur the image a bit. Intensity, think of that one as more like brightness and obviously going to high values makes it brighter and if we change it, you'll see it got a lot brighter. And if we go to lower values and let's say we go to, I yeah, will darken it up a bit. Let's say we go to minus seven here, uh, which is seven units darker than, than what it was when I created it. These things I just created in Inkscape, so there's nothing, there's not a whole lot of detail in them. But the other thing we'll do just for fun is we have a, a dot per inch setting here. Normally you would use 250 if you just want to blast something out quickly. Uh, what I'd like to get here is a good representation of the grayscale as it's printing. So I'll select 500. I won't go to 1,000 because these things take progressively longer to print. So 500 by 500 would take four times as long as 250 by 250, which is already long enough. So, uh, so with that, we can actually let's move these up so we can save a little bit of material and we can start the job. And what I'll do is I'll record it in the actual printer working on these so you can see what's happening. The cut, you know, granted is kind of uneventful, but, but you'll be able to see particularly how this graduation gets printed. And uh, so I'll hop over to the laser now and, and start that job. And you'll see the output uh, when it's finished. So our experiment is finished. You can see the up in the corner here, I'll put the video, uh, the three different pieces we cut. The, the first one, the actual cut, just created a square, uh, square hole. And uh, the middle one was the etch where we, we created those concentric uh, squares. The very center one, we etched it down, uh, I'd say a millimeter or so uh, into the into the plywood, and you can actually feel a nice smooth uh, square there, even though it's it's kind of depressed below the natural surface of the material. And that final part was the uh, was the gradient uh, engrave. And if you make one of these yourself, it's quite simple. Uh, you can see the. Uh, you can feel that the darker area, uh, as it contours up to the surface, it, it's kind of a nice smooth ramp. It feels uh, really nice. And if you want to see a little more detail of what you can actually do with engraving, I'll, I'll also put a picture up here of uh, the uh, a very kind of WTF moment that uh, one of our dogs had. So I, I took a photo. And that was just a photo that I uh, that I engraved just to to create a test uh, to show you. Um, the look, incidentally, was because he had his jacket on and discovered it was quite cold outside. So, um, so with that, we'll call it a video. Hopefully, you got some value out of it. If you did, give it a thumbs up down below. Uh, feel free to leave a comment. We'll start a discussion. And if you like the channel and, and what we're trying to do here, then uh, please subscribe. Uh, it helps me and it helps you. Uh, my goal, of course, is to help you make your world. And uh, if you enjoy doing that, then I'll see you next time.